weekend. Big story in Michigan State, Minnesota, and of course your host, the Ohio State Buckeyes. And good afternoon, everyone. I'm Dean Linke with our six-time All-American and four-time Big Ten champ of Michigan, Olivia Karras. And Olivia, a revolution in women's college gymnastics, and the Big Ten leading the way, 18 program records and 15 tens. Dean, we are in the beginning of a revolution in Big Ten gymnastics. The competition has never been this fierce before. It's so exciting to see what these teams are bringing to the table. Olivia won an all-arounder here, so let's put the focus on three all-arounders to start, including a great athlete from Maryland. You have to talk about Audrey Barber. She has been outstanding in her senior season. She is the number one all-time scorer in Maryland history. Notched a career high of a 39.625 just this year. She's continuing to make so much noise in her final year as a Turk. Mia Takakawa has been perfect once again. She scored her second career 10 on balance beam just last weekend, helping the Illini to a new program record team score, and she is now the highest scoring all-arounder in Illinois history. Lauren Bridges tore her Achilles last season. It was heartbreaking, but she's back. She's competing on all four events, specifically coming back with a 9.925 on floor exercise, helping Penn State on a great run this season. Olivia, there are also event titles to look out for. Adeline Kenlin is back. She's the reigning Big Ten Freshman of the Year. She's competing on three events. She brings lots of difficulty, consistency, and confidence to this young Hawkeye team. Belle Huang from Rutgers has been amazing this season. She notched a 9.975 on floor exercise, making lots of noise on balance beam and floor. Keep an eye on her. She could buy for that floor title. And finally, Kinsey Davis from Nebraska is outstanding. She scored a 9.975 on uneven bars against Michigan this season. She is definitely going after that Big Ten bar title and maybe even a national title on that event. The Nebraska Cornhuskers, led by Heather Brink, now in her third season, the first Cornhusker to ever have a 10 as an athlete. She's also an all-around national champion. The Cornhuskers will start on the ball, and that is their lineup. Spence, Peringer, Coleman, Davis, Hall, and Curtis. Sarah Shire-Brown, now in her fifth season at Penn State, an elite-level gymnast, part of the USA program as well. Penn State will start on the bars. Johansson, Johnson, Romano, Rushlow, Bridgens, and Alyssa Bonzo for the Penn State Nittany Lions. The Rutgers Scarlet Knights, Umi Celine Beasley. She had a perfect 10 as an athlete at West Virginia, and Rutgers will start on the beam. And they'll have Manifold, Batavio, Zanella, Newman, Joyner, and Bell Wong. And of course, Rutgers. Flight was canceled, a 12-hour bus trip. They got in almost at nine o'clock last night at the Cavelli Center, trained, and yet they're ready to go overcoming adversity. They have looked fantastic this season. I'm excited to see what they do today. And in his 13th season at Maryland, after 31 years, his dad, Bob Nelligan, it's Brett Nelligan in year 13. And Maryland will start on the floor as it'll be Rubio, Robber, Osterhout, McClure, Rothenbusher, and Barber for Brett Nelligan, who, by the way, says his father is out of cancer, completely cancer-free after four or five years battling. So good news for him. Of course, on by will be Illinois, led by Natalie Walsh in her fifth season, and Iowa, Larissa Libby in her 18th season. And Dean Linky with Olivia Karras. Olivia, it has been an amazing year for college gymnastics, especially in the Big Ten Conference. I have never seen the Big Ten Conference this competitive before. Usually, there's a couple teams that are ranked in the top 10, in the top 25. This year, there's seven teams ranked in the top 25. There's a lot of exciting gymnastics happening in this session and in the evening session. So keep your eyes out for some big routines. Those scores can carry over and take the title in the evening. So remember this first session with six teams means two teams on by. So Illinois and Iowa will watch. In the second rotation, it'll be Nebraska and Rutgers. Illinois will appear in the second rotation on the floor where, by the way, they're tied for 21st in the country. And Iowa will appear on the bar. Speaking of 
those national rankings. Six teams in the top 27 in the top 25. I mean, look at how exciting this is. It's so amazing to see teams like Michigan State, Iowa, Maryland, Illinois. They're fighting for these big time scores and spots. And exactly what you're going to see today is why the attention to detail, the difficulty, and the consistency is unmatched this year. It's worth mentioning for those of you at home wondering about this first session, you can win a Big Ten title out of this first session. In fact, your alma mater, Michigan, has done just that. They have. this. The session breakdown is all based on win-loss record during the regular season. Ultimately, it's anyone's game. And this competition will have six teams. They do have those buys, as you mentioned, Dean, which makes it a little longer. You have to fill that time, stay involved with the team, but you get a nice little rest in there. So it'll be fun to see six teams competing out here this afternoon. And since we broke down the all around, which by the way, you won, congratulations in your final year. That's Thank awesome, you. Olivia. <laughs> yeah, we have seen an all around winner also come out of this first session. We have, I believe it was Megan Schweighoffer from Nebraska won the Big Ten all around title a couple of years back from the afternoon session. So this session is extremely crucial. We've seen a lot of good gymnastics happening. So many 10s as well, and don't be surprised for more 10s. We're going to start on the bars. Jessica Johansson, a career-high 9.85. Penn State nationally on the bars, 21st in the country. And ladies and gentlemen, we are rolling here at the Cavelli. Jessica opens up with a blindfold to a big Takacha release move. Very nicely done there. Good handstand work on the high bar. Pack Salto down to the low bar. You notice that leg separation in the air. The judges sit on the side of the uneven bar, so might not have been as prominent. Great handstand. Looking for a big stick to start them off on the double layout. Little stutter step there. I would say that's about a, a half tenth of a deduction. You notice she didn't control the landing exactly for a zero deduction landing, but excellent start for Penn State on uneven bars. The freshman from West Hartford, Connecticut. Up first for Nebraska on the ball, Emma Spence, 9875, career high, the leadoff for the Cornhuskers. Emma Spence has been great as a leadoff for the Cornhuskers. She's got to find the landing. Good job. That was a big hop backwards. Unfortunately, they will take at least a tenth off there. But what Nebraska needs to hone in on here is those landings. It's all about minimizing the deduction and moving on. We move over to Jackie Manifold, the leadoff for Rutgers. Again, after that long bus trip in, a 9-8 career high for Jackie. Jackie is crucial for this lineup. The leadoff performer really sets the tone. And I would argue that the leadoff on balance beam is, in fact, the hardest position to be in in college gymnastics. She opens it up with her series, a backhand spring layout, step out. Nice landing, a little soft. Knees in that backhand spring layout means her legs weren't exactly tight, so the judges will take that deduction. Side aerial to a beat jump. Nice job moving through that to get the connection. Switch leap to split three quarter. Little hesitation there on the landing, but made sure her core was tight so she could Minimize the deduction. You'll hear us say minimize the deduction a lot. It's all about taking something that might not be perfect and making it as good as possible. And a side aerial full two, a near stuck landing, slight little hop there. That is going to be a deduction, but for being on a bus for 12 hours, to come out there and do that, that's a great start for Rutgers. Yeah, well done to the Scarlet Knights. Second up on the bars for Penn State, Maddie Johnson, a career high 9.875, as you see Johansson in with a 9.775. This view you see here is exactly what the judges see. It's a nice angle. Excellent job on that Maloney to bail handstand. Beautiful body position. Good handstand on the high bar. Just the dismount. It's a blindfold to a double tuck. And that's a stuck landing. Penn State's heating up over on uneven bars. Very nicely done. Sophomore from Boyd's, Maryland. Johnson, second to go for Penn State. Let's go back over to the vault. Kylie Perringer, career high, 9.825. Up next on the vault for the Cornhuskers. 
Kylie's been able to really nail this down. Big your chango full. Little hop sideways. It looked like she didn't get a pop off the table that she may have wanted. That means that her positioning off the table didn't give her enough height to get her chest up on the landing, which results in a perfect landing. So still, great job for Nebraska. They just have to keep finding those landings. It's crucial to get a good score out of this session. We go back to the beam. The Rutgers Scarlet Knights manifold a 9650. This is Braden Batavio, career high at 985. Braden opens it up with a back handspring layout, step out. It's your series. It's required to connect two elements, flight elements. Little bobble there on the landing. The judges will take between a half to tenth deduction or a tenth, depends on the size they saw of the bobble. Split jump to split full. Very difficult connection. Nice job there. Another freshman for Rutgers. Braden is from Woodstown, New Jersey. As a freshman coming into this competition, it's so exciting competing on this big stage. And so far, Braden is handling it beautifully. Just the dismount. It's a cat leap to a side aerial into a tuck full. Not quite stuck there. You notice she was a little off on the landing, but that's a hit routine for Rutgers. Ultimately, they just need to stay on the balance beam and do the best they possibly can. They move back over to the bars for Penn State. Third up, Bella Romanagno. As you see, 985 for Johnston. Slight arch there on that first handstand. But nice Maloney down to an excellent Pac Salto. A little trouble there on the half turn. She paused a bit going into the handstand, but continues working through. Just the dismount for Bella. Big double layout. And a hop forward, a little under rotation. That means she didn't quite get the dismount all the way around, which resulted in under rotation. It's going to be a little bit more of a deduction than if you were to step or hop backwards, showing more control in the skill. Bellas from Ohio as we move back over to the vault. Martina Coleman, career high 9-9. Nine, nine. Another full twisting Yurchenko. I've seen her nail this one before. Good job. Oh, she just didn't bend her knees quite enough on that landing. Hopped a bit backwards. It seemed a little unnecessary of a hop to me, but I'm seeing clean vaults here from Nebraska. If their last couple vaulters can nail the landings, they're going to be in a really good place. Third up for Rutgers on the beam, Stephanie Zanella, capable of a big score, a career high 9 9. Showing some beautiful flexibility there to begin this routine. Stephanie opens up with a very difficult switch ring. Took her eyes off the balance beam. Leib, if you remember, Umi Salim Beasley told us when we had at Rutgers during the regular season that this apparatus was their best potential for big scores. Yes, Umi was so pleased by her team's confidence on this event. And so far, Stephanie is showing just that. Little hesitation on that full turn element. It is a requirement for all gymnasts to complete a turn on the balance beam. And just the dismount, a beat jump to a side aerial full. That's a stuck landing. Perfect control there. Excellent job for Stephanie. So high fives for the Rutgers Scarlet Knights. Kinsey Davis, 9875, won the Sportsmanship Award as well. First team all Big Ten. Next to go for the Cornhuskers. Kinsey is so fantastic. She can drill this. She just has to find that landing. And good job. She hopped in place. Just so unlike her. Normally she's really good at finding that landing, but good job over there. Need to keep honing in on those landings in order to put up a big score. Big Ten Network will be updating the scores on the bottom of your Big Ten Network screen the entire day as we move back over to the bars for Penn State. Nice 
Nice first element there. It was a blind change. The Cavelli Center here in Columbus, Ohio, a beautiful, beautiful facility. We move back over to the beam for the Scarlet Knights. Kayla Newman, like Zanella, right before her, a career high of a 9-9 as she's still awaiting a score. Maryland starting on the floor. Rutgers, as you see, on the beam. Penn State on the bars. Nebraska on the ball. Your first rotation buys Illinois and Iowa. Kayla is such a staple in this beam lineup. She had a little trouble last week, only scoring a 9.675, but she's capable of a very big number here. Sophomore from Jacksonville, Florida. Beautiful full turn, so confident in her movement. Big test here, a front toss, connected to a beat jump, good job there. A little low on her landing, but she brought it back very well. Well, this is difficult. She does a backhand screen with two feet to a layout step out. We don't see this very often. Excellent, and a nice smile from Kayla Newman. You don't get a Kayla Newman smile just for anything. Leap combination, a split jump to split three-quarter. Excellent. So far, so good. Over here on balance beam, see the confidence Looks so sure of her movements. Season high as a team on the beam, 49-25. And a car wheel gainer full to a stuck landing. I can see why her career high is a 9.9. That was an excellent routine by Kayla Newman. Lauren Bridgens for Penn State. On the bars, who could forget out at BYU when she had a perfect 10. This routine is a treat. She's so deliberate with her movements. Excellent Maloney, right back down to a bail handstand. So precise and back up to the high bar. Yesterday, Lauren and Olivia comparing Achilles <laughs> tear marks as well. And massive blindfold, a double tuck, stuck landing. We highlighted her in the open for a reason. Lauren Bridges has come back with a vengeance after being injured last year. It's so awesome to see her just nail that on the Big Ten stage. You know as well as anybody how hard it is to come back from an Achilles. We move back over to Nebraska as it's Hall with a career high 985. She almost stuck this last week. She was really close. Good job there. You notice her chest was down. That means that she hopped forward. That's more of a deduction than if you were to hop backward. So unfortunately that 975 you see there was the score they did drop, but still more to see from still more to see from Asia Hall today. First team all Big Ten selection, Hannah Joyner. Next level on the beam, a career high of 995 as she gets ready to go for the Scarlet Knights. Hannah is so elegant on balance beam. She told me last night that she wants to stay in gymnastics. She has aspirations to be a coach at the college level. Starting off with her series here. It's a back handspring layout step out. Lovely, so confident on her landing there. Now check out this extension on this leap combination. She does a switch leap to a switch half. Little hesitation there, but moves through it with just picture perfect split positions in the air. Junior from Waldorf, Maryland. Just the dismount for Hannah Joyner. She does a side aerial to a layout full. She's very keen on finding this landing. There it is! Nice job by Hannah Joyner. She delivered. We 
booted by Umi Salim Beasley. Let's go back over to Penn State. Cassidy Rushlow on the bars for the Nittany Lions. And Cassidy's extension is just out of this world. Beautiful straddle Jaeger connected to a direct shoot over. Her toe point is just to die for. Lovely handstand on the high bar. Little body position there on the blindfold. But look at that stuck landing. Penn State has tape on their feet. I mean, my goodness, that was great. We'll keep an eye on her score. Russell's career high is 9.925. That looks pretty good. That looks pretty good. Definitely could be up to that standard of scoring for that routine. Last to go for Nebraska on the vault. Michaela Curtis, career high, 9.875. She has a little bit of a pike in the hips, so she needs to find it. There we go. Look at that stuck landing. Great job minimizing the deduction. There was some pike in her hips. That means that her body position wasn't completely flat in the air. The judges are looking for complete flat body position, but nothing quite like sticking a ball at Big Ten. Bravo to Michaela Curtis. So Nebraska in with a 49-1 through one rotation, and now it's Audrey Barber. Part of that club we were talking about where you mentioned Big Ten royalty, include Barber in that. Audrey Barber is not just Maryland royalty. She is truly one of the best gymnasts to ever come through the Big Ten. And that right there is why. Look at that full in, beautiful landing. Coach Brett Nelligan told us that she has competed all around in every single competition she's ever competed in. Talk about consistency. All around in every single one. I mean, are you kidding me? That's so hard. Three times first team all Big Ten, 2018, 21, and this year. Nice job on her leap combination. That's a requirement for all athletes on the floor exercise. Fun fact about this floor music, it is floor music from all four years at Maryland. This is her last year. She combined all floor musics and check out that double top. Brett Nelligan is into it. And how could you not be for the great Audrey Barber on floor? Oh, my heart. That was absolutely superb. Bonus coverage of Barber, one of those fifth year seniors and big hugs from her coaching staff as we are off to a fantastic start here in session one of the Big Ten Women's Gymnastics Championship. We'll see the Illini and the Hawkeyes when we return. It's the Big Ten Women's Gymnastics Championship right here on the Big Ten Network. Big Ten Women's Gymnastics Championship is brought to you by Discover and by Dr. Pepper. The Eli and I will enter the fray and it was a big day yesterday here at the Cabelli Center as all of the award winners were recognized. Olivia, we were here for that. This is your first team all Big Ten and some superstars on this list. I mean, check out this list. It is packed with some of the best gymnasts in the country, not only in the Big Ten. I love seeing the recognition for all the hard work that's gone into this competition and into this season. Second team, all Big Ten. Some names that pop out at you, Lauren, Garen, and Maya Hooten. They are outstanding. We are going to see Lauren Guerin on floor exercise later. She's the reigning Big Ten floor champ. See Lauren Bridgens on there coming back with a vengeance after that injury. So much to be proud of for these teams. And you take a look at the Sportsmanship Awards. Something that stands out to me is Bell Wong and Kinsey Davis. First team all Big Ten and also the Sportsmanship Award winners. That's how you know that they are all around competitors and all around team players. I love this list. It's an award that sometimes goes overshadowed, but I think it's one of the most important ones out there. 
We talked to every single one of those athletes yesterday that won the Sportsmanship Award as obviously sportsmanship has always been an important part of gymnastics. It is, and that's part of the team atmosphere. You see the teams doing the floor routines on the side. You see the jumping up and down after stuck vaults and stuck landings. The best part about college gymnastics is the camaraderie you have with your teammates, and seeing that is really exciting. First time we see Natalie Walsh, and let me tell you folks, she shows up for the Big Ten Women's Gymnastic Championships third last year. She's had some big finishes, now in her fifth season. She's won a national championship at a lower level at her alma mater, UW Oshkosh. She's doing great things at the Illini. This Illinois team is stacked. Their floor team is really good this season. So keen on landings. We were watching them in warm up and we made the comment that they look so ready. So precise, pristine on the landings, clean and aware of where they are. On the floor, it's a podium. The floor can be a little bouncier, and they've managed it well so far. Always good to have Natalie Wash and Larissa Libby, former Canada national team superstar, LSU. 18 seasons, highlighted last year by winning the Big Ten regular season. Larissa has a great squad here. They're doing so well this season, specifically on floor exercise. Watching them in the practice day yesterday and in warm-ups today, I mean, they have themselves a party over on the floor exercise, so get excited about that. We're going to take a break. We'll be back for the second rotation. Stay with us. Second rotation, session one, Big Ten Women's Gymnastics Championships here in Columbus, Ohio. Dean Linke with Olivia Karras, Iowa and Illinois now will participate. It'll be Iowa on the bars, Illinois on the floor. You see the scores through the first rotation with the four teams that appeared with Illinois and Iowa now entering the fray, <laughs> Iowa. We'll start with Allison Zolke, a transfer from Towson University. She was on exhibition when we saw her during the regular season. Now that all-important leadoff. The leadoff performer is extremely important. I've watched Allison practice at this competition and in the warm-up. She's so icy. You know she's just going to go up there and give it her all. It's a very clean competitor, and her first release move is massive, so keep your eyes peeled. Sophomore from the state of Wisconsin, representing the Iowa Hawkeyes. Big leadoff performance here. She does a big Hindorf release. Excellent height there. Down to the low bar, pack salt, a little soft in the knees on that release move. The judges will take a deduction there for some bent knees. Slightly short on that handstand, that is a deduction. But just the dismount, that's a stock landing, exactly what you're looking for. Perfect leadoff stick. That's what you want at the end of the day. Is sticks are contagious. You want them to start off strong. So a solid start for Larissa Libby and the Iowa Hawkeyes. Exciting stuff. That lineup is packed. So excited to see what they do over there. They're a fun team to watch. Bello Romagnino, a career high 9825 on the beam. The leadoff for Sarah Brown and the Penn State Nittany Lions. Penn State has had a little trouble on balance beam this season, but Sarah Brown told me that they've gone back into the gym and they've really worked through some of these kinks to get their team on the same page, really focused on what they're doing. Big test here. Two back hands brings into a layout step out. Oh no. Very off there on that series. She did grab the beam. That is a flat 3 tenth deduction. So on top of the other break in the hips and the wobble, the judges will have to take 3 tenths off for touching the balance beam. Bell is from New Albany, Ohio. So nice for her to be back in her home state. Nice recovery on the split jump to very difficult double stag jump. Again, taking her eyes off the balance beam. And just the dismount here, a side aerial to a tuck full. Little off on the map there. Definitely not the routine they wanted to start off. She had that very big break early on her series, but that's why you can drop a score. Still five more routines that can make up for it. First vaulter for the Terps, Josephine Kogler, career high 9-9. Nine, nine. 
She's been so close to a stick this season. She just has to find that landing. Oh, so good. I just wish she absorbed that landing. That means bending the knees when you land. Let yourself find the mat. Keep tight in your body. She looked to react to the mat and jump out of it, unfortunately. So it's Marissa Rojas, career high 9.75, second to go for Penn State. Funky handstand there. It looked like she lost her body position, but great job bringing it back on that Ginger release move. A little rush on the bail handstand. Could have waited a bit longer to hit that handstand on the low bar. And right into the dismount, stuck landing, even though that first handstand was a little bit off. They are two for two on sticks over there on bars for the Hawkeyes. Indeed, Rojas for the Hawkeyes with a career high of 9.75. It's Iowa on the bars, Maryland on the ball, Penn State on the beam, Illinois on the floor, Nebraska and Rutgers on the bye. Second up on the beam, it is Cox with a career high of 9.75. And this is such an amazing story. Damiana is a senior. She has not been in the lineup until this year. She exhibitioned the Beamer team a couple weeks ago, and now she is second in the lineup. So amazing to see all her hard work go into competing for Penn State. Good job working through that front aerial backhand spring. She was a little hesitant on the connection. Switch lead to straddle quarter. Good job, needed a little more extension on that straddle for a no deduction. And aerial to a beat jump, good job working through that. And just the dismount, it's unique. She does a cat leap to a side semi, landing sideways on the beam. And a tuck full off, very cool dismount. Check that out. Oh, and just a step on the landing. That's so exciting to see her compete. Big hugs from Sarah, Sarah Shire Brown. She knows what it went into competing that routine on the big stage. Emma Silberman, a 9875 career high, second to go for Maryland. This is a unique vault. Emma does a full twist onto the table and a tuck off. Nice job, that's one of the better vaults I've seen her do. She's done a really great job working in the gym on getting that vault to be higher and less further from the table and her hard work is paying off, bravo. Yeah, you could tell from her reaction, she was very pleased. Definitely, I love to see that hard work pay off right when you need it to. Third to go for the Lion Eye on the floor, Abby Mueller, a career high 9925. She is so much fun to watch. This floor routine is off the charts good. If you want to see some sass and some fun, then you're in the right place. Fun music for Abby Mueller. She opens it up with a big double pike. Oh, little bit of a bounce there. She wasn't absorbing the landing. You're gonna hear us say absorb a lot. That means not fighting the ground, but letting yourself use the ground to your advantage. Front lay to a front full. Little scooch there, it's going to be at least a half temp. Mueller, a sophomore from Rochester, Minnesota, part of Classic Gymnastics. Just the last pass here for Abby. Big double tuck. Nice job, that was the best landing of all three. Very controlled, she kept her front foot planted, and she had some fun. Nice job by Abby Mueller. She saved her best pass for the last she one. She definitely did, and that's the hardest one to do when you're tired, but sometimes it works in your favor, you don't have as much adrenaline. So we move back over to Maryland, Elizabeth DeBarbery, career high 9825. 
This is a great falter, lots of power. Lovely full twisting your Chanko. That hop back was decently big. It'll be at least a tenth off. And for a reminder, a full twisting your Chanko starts from a 9.95. So the maximum score you can receive is that. A great job. Maryland is putting up some big vaults over here. Fourth to go on the beam for Penn State. Isabella Salcedo, career high, 9.85. You were super excited yesterday watching this young lady get ready. This beam routine is lovely. She is so fluid. The choreography is so confident. You'll notice the way she works the balance beam. She owns the beam. This will be a fun one. We'll go back, but right now let's go back to Olivia Ware, career high 9875 for the Terps. Another great falter for Maryland. She's worked really hard on this. Oh, this, that bounce in place. You notice that we've seen a couple of more vaults that have been very static in their landing, and the Terps are getting a little bouncy, which is a pretty decent sized deduction, unfortunately. Ooh. Hopefully their next two can really control those landings a bit more. Over the years, Liv, we've talked a lot about the podium setting, and it can be a little bit more bouncy. You need to be ready for that, correct? Absolutely, and that's why yesterday's practice session was crucial for these athletes to feel the equipment as it's a little bit different. Isabella opens up with a full turn with fired element. Nice deep breath there before her series. Back handspring layout. Oh no, oh. Unfortunately, that fall means that Penn State is going to have to count Bella Romagnano's mishap earlier in the lineup. Oh gosh. That's too bad as Penn State coming off a massive score against New Hampshire. Best score of the season as a team. Very difficult front tuck there on the balance beam. Not many gymnasts perform that skill as it's very hard to do. Salcedo, a freshman from Arlington, Texas. Split jump to a straddle three quarter. Little problem there, had to lift her leg up. Judges will take a flat one tenth deduction. And just the dismount, it's a front full. Very nice stuck landing. So bummed for her as she's been an absolute rock on this event for Penn State. Luckily, we get her on a couple more events today, but Penn State has the opportunity with Bridgens and Johnston to bring it back a bit, but unfortunately, they will have to count a couple low scores. Alexis Rubio, who has a career high, career high of 9-9, and you see right now, she's gonna deliver another 9-9. I am thrilled for this young woman. Check that out. Brilliantly stuck, almost stuck. It was a little scooch backward, but that's one of the best vaults in the NCAA. I hope we get more of that this season and Alexis can buy for a championship this year. She sets the table for Audrey Barber, who had a 9-9 on the floor. Let's go back to the Hawkeyes and Greenwald on the bars with a career high of 9-9. Big Ray release move. Right back up to the high bar. She does a massive pack salto. So nice in the air. So far, so good here for Alex. Great last handstand, just the dismount. She's a big double layout. And a hop backward. Great routine, though. That hop will be at least a tenth of deduction. But nice job by Alex Greenwald. She is such an unsung hero for Iowa. Reminding you that two teams are always sitting out with a bye as you keep track of the scores. So that's why some of them will need to catch up as they participate. There's Barber, her 985. Audrey is a fabulous vaulter. Look at that flare in the air. Just the hop backward, which is a tenth, which is why she received that 9.85. No other deductions in that vault besides that hop. So if you're Maryland through two rotations at 98, 4, 2, 5, are you satisfied? I think so. They definitely didn't have their best floor performance, but they came back on vault and nailed some of those vaults. So I think they're feeling good going into the bye before the final two rotations.
You're hearing the wisdom of four-time Big Ten champion from Michigan, Olivia Karras. Dean Linky with you. Delighted to be with you for a full day of coverage of the Big Ten Women's Gymnastics Championships. And Olivia will move back to the bars for the Iowa Hawkeyes. Allison Steffensmeyer, career high, 9925. She had some trouble last week. She only scored a 9.45. Very nice on that Pike Jaeger. Beautiful extension on her pack level. My goodness, that was lovely. Pack turn finished on top of the bar. Exactly what the judges are looking for for a zero deduction skill. Blindfold into a double tuck. Oh, it's just the scoot backward. My goodness. Iowa was on fire over there on uneven bars. Best score for the Hawkeyes right there for the junior from Cedar Rapids, Iowa, Allison Steffens Meyer. Lauren Bridgens on the B for the Penn State Nittany Lions, part of the all around story. Lauren is so elegant on balance beam and she told me that she enjoys competing beam because she likes the challenge that it brings each time she's up there. Cat leap to front toss, a little low there on that landing. That's something the judges look for is body position on the landing, but great job minimizing the deduction. Career high is 9-9, season high 9-8-7-5, little wobble. Slight bobble there. Unfortunately, that will break the connection, I believe, between that switch leap to side aerial. And she does a great job of managing to stay on the beam on the side aerial. Very difficult to do when you have a bobble midway. Required series, back handspring layout, step out. A little off, but great job of keeping her core tight and moving through it. See, they'll have to drop Rushlow and Salcedo, so Bridgens and Johnson have to deliver. Nice round off one and a half to a perfect stuff landing. Great job for Lauren, a little shaky here and there, but she did a nice job of managing her nerves staying on the balance beam. Second team, all Big Ten. The anchor on the bars for the Iowa Hawkeyes. Adeline Kenlin, a career high 9-9. This routine is so beautiful. Adeline has fantastic technique. Nice Maloney up to the high bar. Pack Salta, wow, very nice extension there. She had some trouble. Oh gosh, a little short there on that Hanson. Some body position issues on the blindfold, but a nice stuck landing. They're going to have to take a decent sized deduction there for that handstand. And the blindfold being a little bit funky in her body position, but great job over on bars for Iowa. How great is to see Mia Towns back in the lineup for the Alliant Eye. Here she goes, last to go on the floor, career high. 9925. Man, I have missed Mia Towns on floor. She lights up the arena, and you will see why right here. Big opening pass, a front double full. Lovely job. Great control on that lunge. Gymnasts are allowed to lunge out of their tumbling passes when they show control and keep the back foot or front foot planted. So great job. Missed most of the season, but set her career high in her last match against Missouri with that 9.925. That's a competitor, someone who delivers when they need to, and they know how to do it big. Such a fun routine for Mia. Final pass, it's a one and a half to a front full, very difficult. Great job, a little bit of a side step. Judges will take a direction deduction for that. She's just such a blast to watch on this event. Coach Walsh was so excited to have her back in the lineup. I mean, how could you not be when she brings so much heat and energy to the end of that line. A great job for Mia Towns. Love having her back. We have gone through two rotations. When we return, we'll get you caught up to date on the team standings 
and the all-around standing session number one from Columbus. Stay with us right here on the Big Ten Network. Tomorrow, men's gymnastics comes your way right here at the Cabelli, featuring a top 10 matchup between number three, Nebraska, and number six, Ohio State. Coverage begins at 1 p.m. Eastern right here on the Big Ten Network and the Fox Sports app. Of course, there are Buckeye fans here as we take a look through two rotations. Remember, each rotation, there are two buys, so it'll take until the final rotation for everybody to get caught up. In the all-around, Audrey Barber with a lead over Lauren Bridges and Cassidy Rushlow. Hannah Joyner from Rutgers in fourth. Hannah Joyner is so great. I'm so excited to see her for the rest of this competition in the fight for the all-around title. We'll be back with rotation three after these messages. Welcome back to the Cavelli Center, your host for the Big Ten Women's Gymnastics Championships. Let's take a look at the last rotation scores, including Marilyn on the vault. Alexis Rubio was lights out on vault. She now holds the highest score on the event, so keep an eye on that number for the remainder of the competition. Here two, 98-425, Iowa on the bars. Oh my goodness, Allison Steffensmeyer was fantastic. That routine was just what they needed. Bringing that energy to beam is crucial to Iowa's success today. Iowa starts with a 49.075 after a first round by Penn State on the beam. Penn State was not what they wanted on balance beam. Definitely some shaky performances there. Not the number they were looking for, but hoping they can finish this meet strong on the last two events after their bye. Through two, Penn State at 96.45. Mia Towns was just lights out between her and Abby Bueller. How can you not smile during this competition? Keep an eye on Mia Towns though on vault. She's gonna be doing an upgraded vault, a Yurchenko one and a half that we have been missing all season. So excited for that. After a first round by a good start for Natalie Walsh and the Illini. As we get ready for the third rotation, it's Iowa Hawkeyes 26 in the nation on the beam. It'll be Nebraska on the bars, Illinois on the vault, and Rutgers on the floor. The leadoff for Iowa will be a first team all Big Tenor, Jerquavia Henderson, who has a career high of 9.875. And Olivia, you've done a great job all season long talking about the importance of that leadoff spot. It's crucial. The leadoff sets the tone, and you're going to hear it time in and time out, but it's true. The first person up decides what the vibe is going to be for the team, and Jerquavia is just the person to do that. She's fun, she's confident, and she ends with a massive round-off double-tuck dismount. That's a little more rare in NCAA gymnastics. We'll see a few more this evening, but Q is my pick to go first on balance speed. She's icy. She can do this. Larissa Libby talking to the judges before Jaquavia Henderson gets ready to go. Jaquavia Henderson, the junior from Peoria, Illinois, Dunlap High School, ready to go for the Hawkeyes. And Jaquavia does a nice, quick, Routine, that's a lot of difficulty on that final dismount. Nice job on her required full turn. Season and career high set this year against Rutgers. Massive back handspring layout, so confident on that landing. Switch lead to straddle quarter, excellent extension. Gymnasts are required to hit 180 degrees split, and Jerquavia hit that requirement. And check this out, just what we were talking about earlier, massive dismount, and she can go big. Round off, double tuck. Oh my goodness, what a lead off routine. Just a hop backwards, but that's how you get a beam rotation started, Dean. Things are heating up. Yeah, I was legit on the beam, 26 in the nation. And Henderson, as Olivia Kara said, getting the Hawkeyes started with a little fire. Mia Takakawa, first team All Big Ten 
first to go for Illinois. They're 19th in the country. Her career high is a 9-9. And Mia is not as strong on ball as the other events, but she knows how to minimize it. And oh my gosh, exactly that smallest hop backwards. She's so good at knowing where she is in the air. Great job for Mia Takakawa. First up for Nebraska on the bars, Katherine Thaler with a career high 9.85. Short on that first handstand, the judges will have to take a deduction. Nice Maloney to very pretty Pac Salto. Over on that handstand, you notice she didn't land perfectly in a handstand. That's what the judges are looking for for a no deduction skill. A little off on that blindfold, but that's a stick on the double tuck dismount. Great job starting off Nebraska. A little trouble here on the intricate details of the bar routine, but the dismount was the exclamation point on the routine. Thaler, a junior from Houston, part of Stars Gymnastics. We are in rotation three of six, sitting out the third rotation, Brett Nelligan's Maryland Terps and Sarah Shire Brown's Penn State Nittany Lions. The Illini, who saw Mia Takakawa get things started. Now we go to Abby Mueller, clear high 9875. And Abby knows how to find this landing. There we go. She knew exactly where she was. Little pike in the hips. Her chest was down a little bit, but she did not give the judges anything to take on the landing. Complete static landing with those feet. That's what you're looking for on Paul. Second up on the beam for Iowa, Mackenzie Vance. She has a career high of 9.875. Mackenzie is a beautiful beam worker. Big opening skill here. Back handspring layout step out. Nice control there on that landing. Very difficult, side aerial to two feet. Don't see that very often, but check out how confident she is. Straddle jump to straddle three quarter. Great job, lost the toe point a little bit in the straddle jump. Even though she did land it perfectly, that will be a deduction. Vance, a senior from Buda, Texas. Just the dismount left for McKenzie to cap off an already great routine. It's a side aerial to a tuck pull. Oh, just a hop backwards. So small, it'll be about a half a tenth deduction, but great job, two for two for Iowa on balance beam. We move back to the bars for Nebraska. Emma Spence, career high 9875. She's number two in the lineup for Heather Brink. Nice first handstand there for Emma. Little leg separation there on the backswing of the Maloney, but great job working through it. Oh, off there on that half turn. Definitely missed that handstand. Judges need that to be on top of the bar in order to give no deduction. And just a dismount, blindfold to a double tuck, another stuck landing. So again, some issues throughout the routine, but she did a really good job of finishing the routine with the stuck landing and giving the judges that to remember as they move on throughout the rest of the meet. Once again, your scores along the, the bottom of your Big Ten Network screen. We go back to the beam alive. The Hawkeyes off to a great start. Bridget Killian, second team all Big Ten, career high 9-9. And head coach Larissa Libby calls Bridget Killian the unsung hero. She's made her way into this lineup and is so confident. Extremely difficult punch front and check out the confidence. So sure of that landing. Little issue there on the switch leap, switch leap. She didn't quite hit that split position perfectly. This little bobble there on the full turn. Just the dismount left, and she knows how to find this. It's a round off, double twist. Little hop backwards. Should be a tenth, unfortunately, because both feet move. 
but great job by Bridget Killian. Back to the floor, the Rutgers Scarlet Knights. Stephanie Zanella, career high 9775. First opening pass for Stephanie, double tuck. A little bit bouncy on that landing, but you see the lines there. She did stay in bounds. If you go out of bounds, it is a flat one tenth deduction, regardless of how many steps out of bounds or how many feet. Second pass for Stephanie. A whip to a double twist. Little messy there in the air, but great job. Stephanie, a sophomore from the state of New Jersey, Immaculata High School. Switch ring to switch half to a ring. Very difficult. You don't see that very often. As a team, Rutgers season high on the floor, 49-3-5. They're very strong on floor exercise, and you can see why so far so good here. Bouncy there on that landing. She needed to control that a little bit more. She had a sizable step, but did not step out of bounds. Again, good to not step out of bounds, so nice job. Nobody good luck for the Cornhuskers, Kinsey Davis. Third up for Nebraska on the bars, Clara Colombo, a career high 9-9. Clara does a very difficult element here. It's called an eagle grip. She twists outward into a massive piked Jaeger. So beautiful. Back down to the low bar. Paxalt a little close to the bar there. She didn't get as much counter swing into that switch grip as she might have wanted. They are one of two Italians on the Cornhusker team. Just so lovely into that eagle grip. And just the dismount at the double tuck. There you go. Sticky feet over there for Nebraska. My goodness. She held on. She held on, that's for sure. Mia Towns, all the scores are in, and Mia Towns with a 9.85. She's got a career high of 9.925. And this is an upgrade. She's going to do the one and a half. Very nice, a little messy in the legs going into that landing. A little bent, but nice job minimizing that hop forward. The six-year senior, Claire Kaji. Like her coach from Canada, and she has been a staple for quite some time in this conference. I talked to her earlier, and she told me, I just feel really old. <laughs> I was like, I'm impressed by you. I don't care. <laughs> nice full turn there to open up the routine. First test, back handspring layout, step out. Little break there, bend at the hips. The judges will deduct for that. How classy was Claire yesterday as they recognized the seniors. She did not want in the shot because she's already been there, done that. She is potentially one of the classiest athletes I've ever met. Nice work on that cat leap side aerial. Split jump to split three quarters. She had some trouble with that in the warm up, but not here, nails it. Just the dismount here for the fantastic sixth here. Back handspring to a gainer full off the side. Oh, hop backwards, but again, six times at these championships. Claire Kaji knows how to get it done, even when it doesn't go exactly her way. Get ready, folks. This freshman for Illinois, Rutuja Nataraj. She can bring some heat on the vault. And this is an upgrade as well, much like Mia Towns. She's adding an extra half turn. I saw her drill it in warm-up. Oh my goodness! And that's exactly what I saw in warm-up. Carbon, clappy, big hugs from Natalie Walsh. As a freshman, to upgrade and do that is so impressive. Bravo to Rutu and the rest of Illinois for bringing the difficulty on vault. Remember Rue too as we bring back over to Kinsey Davis, first team and the Sportsmanship Award winner. Her career high, Olivia, is a 9.975. Yeah! 
Nice straddle Jaeger there from Kinsey. Good bail handstand, a little bend in the arms as she caught the low bar. And Kinsey's been out from this lineup a little bit, battling injury, but we love seeing her back. Double lay. It was stuck with the feet, but it looked a little funky on the landing. The judges may take a half tenth just to show a little lack of control, but Nebraska has really honed in on these landings over on bars. Rhea Simmons, the final vaulter, career high 9.95. And that is a perfect score for a full twisting your Chenko, and she received it just last week. Ah! Lovely vault, not going to be the perfect score this week as she did hop backwards, but I just love seeing how exciting it is for these young athletes to compete on this stage. That was Simons, Rhea Simons, the junior from Richmond, Georgia. Here's Kinsey Davis. We talked about her in the open for a reason. This bar routine is spectacular. Very nice job on that Ray. Oh, short on that handstand. And decent size leg separation on the bail handstand. That is going to be a deduction. Just the dismount. It's double layout, and she knows how to stick it. There we go. Oh, a little bit on the toes. She didn't quite get it, but love the handshake with volunteer assistant coach. Hannah Joyner on the floor for Rutgers. Rutgers 29th in the country. I want to say well done to both Kinsey's, by the way. Kinsey Roby first, then Kinsey Davis on the bars as Joyner ready to go for Rutgers on the floor. Hannah Joyner has been so amazing for Rutgers in her career so far. Big double pike. Good job there, she lacked a tiny bit of control on that lunge, had to move her front foot. Oh, beautiful leap right there. She hits that split petition, position wonderfully. Joyner, by the way, 32nd in the country in the all around. Second pass, front lay, with a full to a front layout. So well done. Joiner from Waldorf, Maryland at Braden River High School. Two older brothers in her family. Beautiful straddle position there on her lead combination. And just the last pass, it's a one and a half to a front pike. Very nice. Love seeing that excitement at the end of that routine. Hannah Joyner just knows how to deliver when they need it big. On beam, you just saw. Well done for <laughs> Hannah Joyner. We move back over to the beam and the Iowa Hawkeyes. Adeline Kinlan, career high 9975, second team, all Big Ten. And this routine is an absolute treat. Adeline is spectacular on balance beam. Gorgeous, look at that smile. She's so in the zone, but she's able to really enjoy herself on the apparatus. Pitch kick to front aerial to a beat jump. Looked a little off after the front aerial, but worked through it to the beat jump very well. Masked that nicely. See the scores on the beam. Switch leap to split jump. Good job in the air there on those split positions. turn element. Iowa finished third in last year's Big Ten Championships. And just the dismount, side aerial to a layout full. Stop planning, it looked like she was smiling in the layout full and she is hyped up about it and rightfully so. The score is in for Kenlin, a 9-9. For the Hawkeyes. Back to the floor. First team All Big Ten for the second consecutive year. Four times Belle Wong has made either second team or first team All Big Ten. Her career high, Olivia, on the floor at 9975.
have been looking forward to this floor routine all day. Nice job on that front double full. Really difficult skill. Bell's mom over in Taiwan. We send our best to her. I'm the only child, Bell. Second pass is a Rudy to a massive layout step out. Not many people do that combination quite like Bell Huang. Nice leaps there. Just the last pass for this super senior. The front Rudy. Beautiful! We highlighted her for a reason. And she's been near perfect for just this reason. Check out that routine. What a way to cap off her Big Ten career at the championships. My goodness. So well said, Olivia. Full stamp, exclamation point for Bell Wong. Three rotations in the books. It's the Big Ten Women's Gymnastics Championships. Session one, fourth rotation, we return. Four ring circus, six ring circus, you name it, we're doing it. Six teams in this afternoon session and then the evening session, four teams, including the reigning national champion, Michigan Wolverines. Every team now has competed at least twice. You'll see their scores. You see Rutgers coming up on the vault, Maryland on the bars, Penn State on the floor, and Nebraska on the beam. Rotation number four when we return the Big Ten Women's Gymnastics Championships on the Big Ten Network. We mentioned a revolution, Big Ten College Gymnastics. That's the future right there, those young girls right there. And how about the all-around story so far, Olivia? We talked about Audrey Barber in the open, but check out Hannah Joyner tied with the great Audrey Barber after two rotations. And Emma Spence, the freshman from Nebraska, is creeping up in there. So nice work from all of these young women as they continue this competition. Five athletes above 19.5 in the all-around chase and point two two five separates first to fifth. So there could be some drama as we look to put an all-arounder up. Now remember, you've got these six teams. You can hang a big score. You can win the all-around from this first session. Absolutely. This is such an exciting competition because there's two meets, but that all comes down to the end, who holds the highest score? And you can win from the afternoon session, absolutely. So we could be seeing some Big Ten champions during this session right here. All right, Olivia, the fourth rotation, it'll be Rutgers on the vault, Nebraska on the beam, Florida State, or Penn State on the floor, and Maryland will start on the bars. That's the lineup for Brett Nelligan. And Brett Nelligan has made sure that we know this Maryland Bars team is putting up six single bar releases and six E dismounts. He said Audrey Barber told her, you know, Brett, we're a bar school. Love to hear that kind of positivity and energy for a program that puts together spectacular routines. Brett Nelligan. Father of two daughters, as we mentioned, replacing his father, who he was so excited to share the amazing news, as he told us that his father, who coached the team for 31 years, was diagnosed with a rare leukemia and didn't even tell his son or daughter for four or five years. It was so lovely to hear Brett be so excited now that his father is in remission and doing great. So props to that family for the positive news. Maryland tied for 13th in the country on the bars. By the way, Nebraska 19th in the country on the beam and Penn State 23rd on the floor. Sierra opens it up with a big straddle Jaeger. Right to a direct shoot over, beautiful connection. Very difficult to do. And just the dismount, she does a double layout and she knows how to stick it. Oh gosh, 
finish just a step forwards. Unfortunately, she will be, the judges will deduct for the step forwards as well as an under rotation, which means a little more deduction. Emma Spence up first on the beam for Nebraska. She has a career high of 9925 and a lovely mount on the beam. Beautiful candlestick mount. We're seeing that mount more frequently now that it has high value in NCAA gymnastics. Very difficult wolf turn. It's a very prominent skill in the elite space and Emma did a nice job with it. Front aerial to two backhand springs. Nice job on that difficult series, a triple series. Three elements connected. Good job working through that side summy, it's called. You saw her arm swing and her body sway slightly. She was a bit off, but she brought it back. Switch lead to beat jump. Nice job. Spence, a youngster from Canada. Just the dismount for the freshman. It's a round off one and a half. Just a small hop forward. The judges will likely take a tenth deduction there, but great leadoff performance for Nebraska. Second to go on the floor for Penn State, Jessica Johansson, career high 9.825, reminding you the Nittany Lions 23rd in the nation on the floor exercise. And head coach Sarah Shire Brown told us that Jessica has come such a long way on this event. Love seeing her in the lineup contributing. Beautiful double pike to open it up. Alyssa Bonzo before Jessica in with a 985. Lovely position in those leap, those leaps, a switch side to it's called a popa straddle with a full twist. Second pass, a one and a half to a front layout, a little low on that landing, but she does a good job making sure she tightens her body position to minimize that deduction. Jessica, freshman, it wasn't that long ago when you were a freshman. What do you remember about your first Big Ten championships? Just soaking it all in, and that's exactly what she's doing. Finishes up with a double tuck. Oh no, oh gosh, bouncy landing there. She did step out of bounds, so that's a flat 10th deduction on the landing, unfortunately. But she's a freshman, she has an amazing career ahead of her, and she'll look back and remember how exciting this meet is, not about the performances as much. Rutgers, first to go on the board. Isabella Hughes, career high 9825. And Isabella stuck this ball last weekend. Good job. Oh my gosh, she could have stuck it again. She just didn't absorb that landing again. I mentioned earlier, we're going to keep saying the word absorb. It means let yourself settle on the mat, but great job. Rhea LeBlanc, second to go on the bars for Maryland, 9 8 career high. Big straddle, Jaeger. Excuse me, Piked Jaeger, very nice. Beautiful bail handstand. Little short there on that handstand on the high bar, but she's a big double layout. Oh, nice job on the double layout. Slight little scooch backwards. Rhea actually, her sister Sophia on the team was unfortunately suffered an injury and Rhea was the one who stepped up and went in on bar, so Props to the LeBlanc family for having that support. So we move back over to the beam and the Cornhuskers. Up next, Olivia Michaela Curtis, a career high 995. Nebraska has some monster scores for career highs in their lineup. They do, and Michaela is one of those people who can act on that. She's very confident on this event. She just has to settle down and take it one skill at a time. Big test here, it's a triple series. Back hand swing to two layout step out. A little off, but wow, great job bringing that back. Nice full turn. 
Season best 9-9 for Curtis. Nice switch leap to split jump. Very good job. And just the dismount for Michaela. She does a round off to a one and a half. Team. She's so great at having a mistake, but really making it look like it wasn't big at all. Good job. Hannah Joyner, career high 9-9. She is in the running for the all-around. She is so good. Check this vault out. Beautiful full twisting your chain. Go again, hop backward. Judges will likely take a round of 10 for that hop backward, but good job for Hannah Joyner. Third up for Maryland. This is Elizabeth DeBarbery, career high 9-9-2-5. And this routine is a good one. She has a massive release there, directly to a shoot over. Needed to get the toes up a bit. The shoot over was a little flat. You want it to rise a bit. Line full. Into the double layout. Hop forward. Oh, Maryland just can't find those stuck landings that we saw earlier from Nebraska. They're doing the difficulty, but looking to see if those last three gymnasts can nail those landings. Marbury, a sophomore from Westchester, PA. We go back to the ball. Rutgers, Mia Betancourt, 9875, career high. Mia has a beautiful vote to string your chain go. She did a nice job in warm-up yesterday. Good work, hop backwards again. Sometimes I feel like I'm just repeating myself over and over again. It's all about these landings. Good positioning in the air and just the hop backwards, but nice job. On floor, Lauren Bridges. To the floor we go here at the Cavelli, the Penn State Nittany Lions, Lauren Bridges, second team all Big Ten, career high 995. She nearly matched that career high just last week. That gives you an idea that she is not messing around coming back from this injury. Excellent double tuck, perfectly controlled lunge. pass Rudy to layout step out huge layout step out check out that landing she knew exactly where to land so she didn't step out of bounds that's a veteran move switch half to wolf full very nice Just the last pass for Lauren Bridgens. It's a front full to a front layout. Beautiful job. Love seeing her out there on the floor exercise after the devastating Achilles injury. That is just an accomplishment in itself. Lauren Bridgens telling both of us yesterday she is going to soak it all in. She's already got her career plan set. Emma Silverman up next for Maryland career high 995. And that was just last weekend. She received that 995. Beautiful finger release move. Glued those legs together. Good job working through the bail handstand. It was a little bit off handstand. The judges want that to land right on top of the bar. And she can drill this landing. Big double layout. There's a stop landing. And Brett Nelligan knows it. Big hugs from the man himself. He knows they needed that one big time. Back to the vault for Rutgers. Bell Wong. And Bell knows how to land this vault very well. Oh, good job. It looked like a stuck landing. She didn't control it enough to salute before turning and saluting the judge. The judge will take an out of control deduction, but Belle Wong is just having herself a day. It's so impressive. 
Rutgers, all six athletes, a 9-8 or better. Unfortunately, none of them over a 9-9. They just need to find that landing, and it's tough. You know, the podium's bouncy. You have that adrenaline, so sometimes you just have to figure out how to tone it down and almost not go as hard as you would think. Kinsey Roby, 9-9-5 career high on the beam. Such a beautiful and unique mount there for Kinsey. She's so flexible. Nice front aerial. Senior from Gardner, Kansas, Triad Gymnastics. That handspring layout, a little off there. You saw her left shoulder dip slightly, but she did a very nice job not showing the judges. Mind that the judges sit on the side of the balance beam, so their view may be a little different than what you see here. Roby season high on the beam, a 9-9. Split jump to double stag, and there's a smile. She knows that one was good. Just the dismount for Kinsey. She does a side aerial to a layout full. Excuse me, tuck ball, step landing. Great job, big hugs to, from Heather Brink. High fives, good work. Of course, Heather Brink, an all-around champion at Nebraska as we move back to Maryland, flying high on the bars. Aleka is so good on this event. Huge straddle, Jaeger, great job. Nice bail handstand, working through this routine very well. Slightly short there on that handstand. Not much of a deduction, but the judges will take something. Oh my goodness. Textbook, double layout, stuck landing, and we were just told that's a 9-9. Which ties her career high. So Leka Chiknius, you saw the response from Brett Nelligan. He knew it. Emily Lease, last to go for Rutgers on the ball, career high, 9-9. She does a Yurchenko one and a half, much like we saw from Illinois earlier. She can go big. Lovely. Oh, hop forward. They'll likely take around a tenth, maybe a little more on that hop forward. But so impressive to see her do such big and difficult gymnastics. She had a 9-9 nine, nine her last time here in Columbus. Last to go for Brett Nelligan in this high-flying bars team, Audrey Barber, career high 995 for the first team all Big Tenor. Beautiful Hindorf release directly to a shoot over. Little short on that last handstand, but just the dismount for Audrey. Step backwards, all right. Not exactly what she wanted, but great rotation for Maryland. Nice job. Senior from Temple Hills, Maryland, Thomas A. Edison High School. Last to go for Penn State on the floor. Isabella Salcedo, career high, 9.95. She can light it up on the floor. And this routine is lovely. You are going to want to watch this one on repeat, let me tell you. She opens it up with a very unique double front. We don't see these very often. Wow, gorgeous. Want to take a moment to send a shout out to senior Melissa Astorita, who is not here with us due to injury. We miss her tremendously on floor exercise and are sending her all the best and love from the Big Ten Network. Sato, the freshman from Arlington, Texas, Laurel Springs online. That was a wink to Olivia Karras, <laughs> folks. Last pass, front layout to a front fold, directly to an absolutely textbook beautiful front pike. And she finishes the routine with her jump combination into a 
Full twisting Shishinova. And an outstanding routine for the super freshman. Gets applause from everyone in the arena. My goodness, so well deserved. Good to see the blue and white of the fans for Penn State. Salcedo, remember that name. That is the future of this exciting conference. When we return, it's the fifth rotation out of six. Session one, the Big Ten Women's Gymnastics Championships. Center in Columbus as we take a look at our team scores in the first session through four rotations, including buys. See Maryland at 147.625, Nebraska 147.275, Rutgers 147.075, Penn State at 145.625. How about the all around story? Check out Hannah Joyner. So exceptional. Number one right now, leading the pack on the all around story. Exciting stuff. Barber in second, Spence in third. Fifth rotation coming when we return to Columbus. Welcome back to the Cavelli Center here in Columbus, Ohio. Your outstanding host to the 2022 Big Ten Women's Gymnastics Championship. Dean Linke with Olivia Karras. Fifth rotation, that'll have Penn State on the vault, Illinois on the bars, Maryland on the beam, and Larissa Libby's Iowa Hawkeyes on the floor. Iowa, one of the best in the country, number 11 in fact, on the floor and a change. It'll be Larissa Libby Light, I think we can say. Claire Kaji leading it off for the Iowa Hawkeyes. Yes, yeah, Claire Kaji will be first on floor for Iowa in her final Big Ten championship floor routine. She has a new routine, so I'm excited for her to perform that. She's just so much fun to watch. Kaji and Libby, both from Canada, both have had incredible careers as Larissa Libby was outstanding for Canada and also LSU. And, oh, we thought it was going to be Kaji. We were told it was going to be Kaji, but Larissa Libby sneaking up on us there as that's the lineup for the Hawkeyes. It looks like they're going to start with Bridget Killian, who is absolutely lovely on this event, opens up with a massive triple twist, one of the best ones in the country. And we will save Kaji's wonderfulness for later. Chilean's career high is a 9-9 on the floor. And Iowa knows how to perform on floor. First pass, big triple twist. Nice job, great control. Second pass for Bridget. A front pull to a front pike. Nice job. Good job on that leap series, making sure to hit 180 degree split. Gillian had a 9-7-2-5 earlier on the beam. Last pass for Bridget. The double tuck. Oh no, oh, bouncy there on that landing and did step out of bounds. So there will be a deduction for the landing as well as the out of bounds. It's a bouncy floor, I understand it, I get it. Uh, but hopefully the remainder of the lineup can remain in bounds and hit their best routines. Nebraska and Rutgers on the bye for the second time here in the fifth rotation. Alyssa Bonzel, 9-9 career high, up first for Penn State on the vault. And Alyssa can be clutch on this event. She just has to open her hips up. Nice job, great work. It looks like we had a little bit of a block there. It looked like she was near stuck on that ball. Great job for Alyssa Bonzel. She's worked so hard to fine tune that ball. Once again, you can keep track of the scores as they're happening on the bottom of your Big Ten Network screen. Big hugs for Bonzel 
as we look forward to getting her score. We move back over to Illinois. Illinois, by the way, legit on the bars. They are 14th in the country. Rachel Borden, a 9.875 career high, will lead it off for Coach Walsh and the Illini. Nice opening sequence there. A switch grip into a straddle Jaeger, directly connected to a shoot over. Now Rachel has a very unique dismount here. She does a front giant into a layout one and a half. Oh gosh, so nice. The smallest scoot there on the landing. They will take, the judges will take a deduction, but great job. Gordon from Legacy Elite Gymnastics. It's Emma Silverman on the beam for Maryland. A career high of 9875. And Emma Silverman was a walk on. Coach Brett Nelligan is just unbelievably proud of her. She was recruited to really step up on vault and floor. And here she is in the all around. Triple series, two back handsprings to a layout step out. Slight shuffle there on the landing and a little soft in her back knee. The judges are looking for perfect gymnastics tight body position. Three times she's hit a 9.875. Very pretty leap sequence, a switch leap to a straddle quarter. Just the dismount, she does a round off one and a half. Good job, a little lack of control there, had to step and turn to salute, which the judges do not call a Duck landing, but good job. Araya Simons with a career high of 9.875. Second to go for the Illini. Good first handstand. She tends to rush, so nice job relaxing there. Oh, off on that Ray. She caught a little close in the shoot over, missed a bit. Just the dismount of blind. Oh, no. Oh, over on that blind full. Supposed to connect that to a double back, has to repeat it now. Here we go, gets it that time. Blindfold, the double tuck, step backwards. Not the routine they were looking for, but reminder that you can drop one of the scores. So that's the one that Illinois is going to want to drop. Courtney Chinnery, a career high of 9 9, second to go on the vault for Penn State. She does a full twist in your chain, though. Looks like a hop backwards, couldn't quite tell there, but didn't show exact control on the landing, which you need to make sure you do in order to have less deduction. Back on the beam live, Reese McClure, what a story. Back in the lineup, her parents are right behind us, all fired up, they were here early. Her career highs at 9925. This routine, when Reese hits, is big. Perfect front aerial to back handspring. Switch leap to straddle quarter, so confident on that landing. Here's a big test for her. She does a front toss. She was off last weekend. There we go, not this weekend, great job. And a unique dismount here for Reese. She's gonna do a step into a Rudy, she can nail this. There we go, Reese McClure, my goodness gracious. That is why she was on the 2022 Big Ten Gymnast to Watch. Adeline Kenlin already threw one pass, career high 9875 on the floor for the Hawkeyes. This routine is fun, she has a blast on floor. One and a half to front layout. So pretty. And now the fun happens. Oh my gosh, the team is jumping. It's just a party over on floor for Iowa. Oh, a little. She stumbled a bit there on her jump combination. Very unusual. 
nice job for Adeline Kenlin. That jump combination will, they will take a deduction there for the stumble landing. It was a difficult one. The switch ring with a full twist, but nice job. We move back to the vault for Penn State. Cassidy Rushlow, a career high of a 9-9. And she can stick this one, and they need it right now. Practically stuck, she hopped in place. Oh my gosh, I just wanted to hold her down so she wouldn't hop. But beautiful vault, so elegant in the air. It's hard to be elegant on vault, but great job. Olivia O'Dono up next for the Illini, a 9-9-2-5 career high. Olivia has excellent toe point. Her lines are beautiful. Straddle game into an immediate shoot over. Back up to the high bar. Slightly short on that handstand. Oh gosh, off, oh my, off on that line full. Has to get back up and do it again. Oh no, oh. Oh gosh. So that means unfortunately, Illinois is going to count a fall. That's a shame. So now, Claire Kaji, we were told that she was going to lead off, but she then slid back to the fourth position. Claire Kaji, 9925 career high on the floor. And this routine is newer. The music has a lot of fight in it. Claire is a very strong advocate for fighting oppression over certain races and demographics. And this routine is meant to show that fight and check that out, that massive first pass. Kaji from Vancouver, Canada. Last pass for Claire Kaji, it's a double pike. Big step backwards, she stayed in bounds, which is great. Unfortunately, that step will cost her a little bit. Beautiful split positions. Which half to a split full. She set her career high this year against Iowa State. Claire Kaji, it has been a treat to watch you for all of these years. So let's go back to the beam for Maryland. Josephine Kogler, career high, 9875. Nice switch lead to Straddle Porter, very popular lead series. Difficult combination here. She does a triple series. She does get into the layout step out. Rock solid. Freshman, Josephine Kobler, two time Junior Olympic national competitor. Nice front walk over. The gymnasts are required to move both backwards and forwards. You can do forwards and sideways, and that was her way of fulfilling that requirement. A little shy there on that. Leap. The switch leap was lovely. The split needed to hit 180 a slight bit more. Just the dismount, a gainer full to a stuck landing. Nice work by the freshman. She has a very bright future ahead of her. We go back to the vault for Penn State. Jessica Johansson, career high, 9-9. Saw her earlier on floor exercise. Good job. Slight movement to the right. The judges look for the direction where you land on the mount on the mat, but good work over there on vault for Penn State. Cap off their day. Illinois needs a monster score from Mia Takakawa. First team all Big Ten. Her career high is 995. Just set last week twice. They competed two weekends in a row, so. She is both talented and consistent. So far, so good here in this bar routine. Not quite on top of the bar, a little off on that handstand. 
And a stuck landing on that double layout dismount. They needed that one big time with a couple mistakes throughout that routine. Live on the floor for the Iowa Hawkeyes. First team all Big Ten, Jerquavia Henderson. Career high, 9975. And Jerquavia has been on the quest for that perfect 10. And what a moment to do it then right here, live on the Big Ten Network. She opens it up with a massive full twisting double back. Tiniest little scooch there with the front foot, but nice work. You're so right about her chasing down that 10. She's hit 9975 three times, including her last meet against Iowa State. That is so impressive. Textbook perfect straddle positioning. Jerquavia only does two passes, so she packs the difficulty in the two. She does a front through to a massive double tuck. Littlest hop forward. It will not be that 10, but definitely a big number. Man, are we lucky. We get two more years of the great Jerquavia Henderson. The fans love it. She's laughing and smiling. Such good stuff. Well done. Speaking of well done, another first team all Big Ten selection. The all around sensation, Audrey Barber, a model of consistency. Brett Nelligan again reminding us that she's done the all around every single meet of her career. That is an impressive stat in itself. Gorgeous front aerial to beat jump. She has such lovely extension in all of her skills. Rock solid back handspring layout step out. Olivia, she now holds all the records. To me, she is a surefire Maryland Sports Hall of Famer. I would say so, and we are seeing that history right here. She's already the all-time scorer, but she still has a couple more meets to go. I mean, talk about exciting. Finding you, Maryland, one of the seven Big Ten teams in the top 25. Switch leap to split jump, beautiful job. Nice full turn for Audrey. And just the dismount left, she does a double twist. Oh, so close to the stick, just that little step. Great job for Audrey Barber. Caps off an excellent day. Audrey Barber always in the all-around chase. Now it's Lauren Guerin, second team all Big Ten, career high 9975. The anchor on the floor for the Iowa Hawkeyes. And just enjoy this one. Oh! Breathtaking. I mean, I've never seen a full in done better than that one I just watched. Oh my goodness, that extension in the leaps. She has been on the 10 chase for years, and this could be it. Oh my goodness! I literally just got chills. That, if that's not a 10, I, I, I don't even know what to say. That was one of the best floor routines I've ever seen Lauren Garen do. What a phenomenal last oh pass. Oh my gosh. I literally just leapt out of my seat. That was so good. The entire arena is cheering for Lauren Guerin. Regardless of what you wear, look at the height! Ah! 
absolute perfection on that landing. My gosh. Look at the team. Larissa is freaking out. Oh my gosh. Lauren Guerin. It doesn't look like it's going to be a 10, unfortunately, with which I heavily, heavily disagree with. But bravo to the great Lauren Guerin. I mean, hats off to her. 995. I'm with you, Olivia Karras. That felt like a 10. Phenomenal cap for Iowa on the floor. We have one more rotation to go in the first session of the Big Ten Women's Gymnastics Championships. And we have it all right here on the Big Ten Network. Our coverage of the 2022 Women's Gymnastics Championships continues later today with session two. News flash, it's sold out. Why? Well, you'll see four top 20 teams in the nation. Your reigning national champs, number three, Michigan. Last year's Big Ten champion, Minnesota, number eight. Number 12, Michigan State, setting program records. And Meredith Policific's number 16, Ohio State Buckeyes. That's coming up at 5.30 Eastern right here on the Big Ten Network and the Fox Sports app. Let's take a look at our team scores, including a couple teams already done. Maryland in with a 196.45. Penn State with a 194.7. The final rotation of session one when we return to Columbus on the Big Ten Network. Welcome back to the Cavelli Center, a $49 million facility home to the Ohio State Buckeyes women's gymnastics team, their super successful wrestling team, both men's and women's volleyball team. The all around situation, Audrey Barber, the leader in the clubhouse as they say, with a 39-35, Lauren Bridgens also done along with her Penn State teammate. So Audrey Barber gonna try to hang on. And of course, Hannah Joyner, Emma Spence, Mia Takakawa and Kayla Newman still have one more event, but so far Barber is in the lead and no, no questions there that she is considering all of her accolades and success as a Terp. The top score is a 9-9, averaging 9-8-3-7-5. So here we go, sixth and final rotation of session one. Nebraska's on the floor, Rutgers on the bars, Iowa on the ball, but we'll start on the beam where Illinois is 23rd in the country and they'll lead off Olivia Karras with Rachel Borden who has a career high of 9875. Rachel has an extremely unique beam routine and it starts with her mount. Normally gymnasts just like to get up on the beam, but Rachel takes it a step further. Pretty handstand position. Rachel, a senior from Naperville, Illinois, part of the Legacy Elite Gymnastics Club. Big series here, front aerial to front handspring into a straddle corner. Such difficulty packed in there. Rachel already with a 9-8 on the bars. Nice full turn requirement. There's her backward element. Again, a requirement on balance beam to move front or side and backwards. Beat jump to very dynamic sheep jump. Took her eyes off the beam. And just the dismount, she does a front full stop landing. Rachel Borden is on fire. My gosh, that was nice. That was nice. Emma Spence, first to go for Nebraska. As you mentioned earlier, Olivia, in the all around story, her career high on the floor is a 985. And as a freshman, she's still learning how all of this works. Competing on a stage like this for a school. Emma does a two pass floor routine. She starts with a one and a half step out to a double twist. 
Very controlled on that landing. Very difficult double wolf turn. Little problem there on the landing. It looked like she needed to be a little tighter in her core. Pretty leap combination, switch ring to Corjete. Final pass for the freshman at the double tuck. Nice routine. What a great way to end her freshman year Big Ten Championship. Nice job. First fall for Iowa, Allison Zolke, clear high, 9875. And she will be performing the Zolke front handspring into a soup tuck ball. My goodness, that's the best one I've ever seen her do. So much control there on that landing. Very complicated vault and a fun celebration for Allison Zolke. First to go for Rutgers on the bars, Kayla Newman, career high, 9-7-7-5. Big opening skill here, a big Hindorf. Oh no, oh. It's like she fell over on that handstand, had to swing around. Whale handstand, just the dismount left. She does a half turn into a double tuck. Nice stuck landing. Such a bummer about that first or second handstand where she had to turn around, but it's nice to see her in the all around. Great to see Umi Celine Beasley as well, reminding you she had a 10 on the bars during her time at West Virginia. We go back to the vault for Iowa. Kendall LaPlante, clear high, 9-8. This is a big one for Kendall. Large hop backwards. Unfortunately, she couldn't control that landing enough to minimize, but it's nice to see the amplitude in the air on that full. Second on the bars for Rutgers, Abigail Karaluski, career high, 985. Abigail has a really nice combination here. She does a clear hip into a ray. Lacked a little bit of height there. A little messy in the legs on that bail. Nice handstand. And she can get this stick on the double layout. Oh gosh, under rotated. Had to step forward. That wasn't her best routine. Back to Iowa, third up for the Hawkeyes, Bridget Killian. Career high, 9.875. Iowa, by the way, 22nd in the country on the ball. And she can drill this. I've seen her do it. And that was pretty close. It still looked like there was a little bit of movement. But I love the excitement that we're seeing from this Iowa team. They're one of the most fun and energetic teams in the NCAA. Illinois on the beam, Abby Mueller, third to go. Career high, 9.925. The Illini, 23rd in the nation on the beam. And she set that career high just last weekend. Lovely back handspring layout. We got to see a nice smile there from her. Sophomore from Rochester, Minnesota, John Marshall High School. Difficult connection. She did two switch leaps, directly connected. Excellent beat jump to front toss. She is just nailing this Beaver team with so much confidence. Just the dismount left for Abby. She does a round off one and a half. 
Oh gosh, small hop forward, but what a great routine. Illinois has had a spectacular evening. Day, excuse me. Lauren Guerin, we thought it was a 10 on the floor, it was a 9-5. Her career high on the floor for the second team, all Big Ten choice, 9-9-2-5. Lauren has a massive vault here. Oh, big hop backwards. Unfortunately, that will likely be a couple tenths off, but she has just been so stellar for Iowa. I am still going to say that that floor routine was a 10 because it should have been. Maya Pringo, fourth up on the bars for Rutgers. Career high, 9-8. Maya opens it up with a blind change to a pike changer. So pretty in that positioning there. A little short on the bail handstand. She was just shy of handstand position. Great handstand on the high bar. And just the distance, she does a straight body, double layout. Step backwards, the judges will deduct for that step, but that was such a clean routine, very nice. She's coming off a career high in front of a big crowd with Florida in town at NC State 9-8. We'll wait and see if she can get that. Linda Zavat, Iowa, fifth to go for the Hawkeyes. Her career high, Olivia, is a 9-9-2-5. And this vault is so special. She has a different entry to a very good vault. There was a hop backwards, but this is my favorite part. She is flipping for her grandmother, running back to the team with that sign. Love to see that. Back to the beam we go for Coach Wash and the Illini. Mia Towns, career high, 9-9. It's so nice to see Mia back, and she was spectacular on floor earlier, and she brings that same pizzazz to balance me. Towns, another outstanding gymnast from the state of Texas, part of the Crenshaw Athletic Club. Cat leap to flawless front toss. Career high coming against Bowling Green a couple meets ago, 9-9. Straddle jump to straddle quarter. Nice job there. Mia with a 9.85 earlier on the vault. It's her series of back handspring layout, step out. Slight shuffle there with the front foot. Manages to remain calm and not give away more deductions than necessary. the dismount left, she does a side aerial to a tuck pull, and a perfectly stuck landing. Love to see that excitement from Mia Towns. We've just missed her so much on the competition floor. Last for Iowa, a car Q, Jerquavia Henderson, first team all Big Ten, 9925 career high. And this vault is massive, check that out. Just the hop on the landing, you see there, 985, only deduction was the hop, the rest of it was just pristine. You see Iowa done now, 196.95, right now your leader. We go back to the bars, Hannah Joyner, career high, 99, waiting on deck, Avery Balzer. This 5-6 from Maryland, special. Definitely, they have figured out who their top people are, and they capitalize on that. A little leg separation on the bail handstand. Great job with that handstand on the high bar. Just the double layout. Oh gosh, big step backward. They'll take a deduction for the step and probably for the extra momentum moving backwards. But Hannah Joyner is just an all around stellar athlete. Live on the beam, I love this mount here for Amelia Knight. Career high 9875 with Mia Takakawa who had a 10 on deck. And talk about a one-two punch, Amelia Knight just works the beam. And to have Mia Takakawa after her, she's the perfect person to set her up and notch a big number for herself. 
from the UK and the Academy of Gymnastics, the sophomore, Amelia Knight. Unique series here. She does a side aerial directly to a back handspring. Excellent job. From where I'm sitting, she looked a teeny bit off and she brought it back and showed no issues there. She matched her career high of 9875 in her last meet at Missouri. Little issue there on the full turn. She had to turn to the side. Difficult combination here. Side summy into a tuck full. We saw that earlier from Damiana Cox from Penn State. Great job by Amelia Knight. Caitlin Higgins, first pass for Nebraska. Little shuffle there on the landing. Didn't look like she absorbed the floor as much as she should have to minimize the deduction. Higgins, like Hall, Curtis, and Peringer before her, career high, 9-9. Second pass is a Rudy. There we go. That's a nice controlled lunge. Switch side to Popa. They call it a straddle full. Very fun tumbling run there. Round off back handspring, back handspring from her knee. Very difficult. Higgins had a 9-9 at the big fives this season. Final pass. For Caitlin, she does a one and a half to a front layout. Lovely control. Last two passes were textbook on how to do a lunge afterward. Very nice. Mia Takakawa. She can and has delivered a 10. First team, all Big Ten by way of Sacramento, California. Side aerial back handspring absolutely nails it. Beautiful full turn there. Despite being from Sacramento, her mom and dad have attended almost every single meet. That is so impressive in itself. Lovely switch leap to straddle quarter. Those split positions should be framed. They're so beautiful. And so far, so good. I have seen nothing wrong with this routine. Dean, if she could stick this dismount, we could see our beam leader. Just back handspring into a gainer full. Oh my goodness! Welsh knows it was a good one. I don't know. That was. Iowa fans are on their feet cheering. Illinois fans are on their feet cheering. We could, we could have just seen at least a share of the Big Ten beam title right there. Mia Takakawa. High fives from Natalie Walsh, the mother of three boys. We move back over to the floor for Nebraska. Katie Kuhneman, 9.85, career high. She opens it up with a double back. Very nice controlled lunge out of that first pass. Head coach Heather Brink says that she just has the cutest smile. She's learning to enjoy performing. It's still new to her performing in front of big crowds, but I think she's handling it very well. Texas, part of Texas East Gymnastics. And 
the last piece of gymnastics in this first session. A one and a half to a front lay. Oh no, oh. Good save there. She's a little under rotated, which resulted in her slipping backward and having to catch herself. But that will do it for Nebraska and for session one of the 2022 Big Ten Championship. So the Iowa Hawkeyes with tremendous performance earlier on the floor and a solid finish on the ball. Your leaders in session one. We'll come back to wrap it up here. Session one from Columbus on the Big Ten Network. Welcome back to the Big Ten Women's Gymnastics Championships in Columbus, Ohio, where the Iowa Hawkeyes have a 196.95. Don't forget, later today, it's a one versus two men's lacrosse matchup in the nation's capital when number one Maryland squares off with number two Virginia. Live coverage begins today at 3 Eastern on the Big Ten Network and the Fox Sports app. We're just getting started, though, in Columbus, where the Iowa Hawkeyes, led by Larissa Libby, 18 years as the head coach with a big score of 196.95. Well done, Hawkeyes. And also a shout out to Maryland and Nebraska. So right now, Iowa is your leader as we head into the 5.30 session tonight. And I would agree with this scoring. Iowa absolutely was the team on fire today, but kudos to the other five teams, Maryland and Nebraska in particular. Great scores for them. Illinois had some mishaps over on uneven bars, so not exactly what they wanted. Rutgers with a great performance considering what they went through to get here, and of course, Penn State, not what they wanted, unfortunately, with the balance beam mishaps. You mentioned Rutgers, Hannah Joyner joining the party with Audrey Barber, your leaders in the all around race through one session. Regardless of who ends up with the all around title, this is an important list of women for everyone to take a look at. Hannah Joyner as a sophomore, Audrey Barber as a fifth year, putting up massive numbers. And Mia Takakawa with that 39-325, I mean, Everyone performed today, and of course, it might not always go exactly the way you want, but I think we saw some great gymnastics this afternoon. Illinois, actually, with three event leaders, Rutu Nataraj leading the vault, and Takakawa leading the bars in the beam. It's Garen leading the floor, as that's going to wrap it up from session one here at the 2022 Big Ten Women's Gymnastics Championships. Iowa, your leader in the clubhouse. We're going to be right back here at 5.30 Eastern. Number three, Michigan. Number eight, Minnesota. Number 12, Michigan State. And number 16, Ohio State. I want to thank on stats, Bob Zink, also on stage, Lexi Mattern. Also want to thank Jim Ressler and our incredible crew. We'll be back here at 5.30. For Olivia Karras, I'm Dean Linky. We'll see you at 5.30 Eastern right here.